I want to do one more example for confidence intervals, which is 4.2. In the last video, we did a quick example where we talked about the number of pepperonis on a pizza, because I don't know, I wasn't thinking of anything, didn't want to try to be creative and come up with anything new. Um, in on that note of not coming up with anything new, let's do another example. Uh, redwood trees, I think we talked about at some point. Suppose you randomly select, I don't know how, but suppose you do. Um, I don't know, let's say 50 this time. 50 redwoods. And measure maybe 50 fully grown red redwoods. I don't know, 50 redwoods and measure the diameter of each. I didn't Google how big the diameter of a redwood is. Uh, I don't know, they're pretty big, 10 feet maybe. Suppose you randomly select 50 redwoods and measure the diameter of each. Um, you calculate the average diameter in your sample, sample, <laughs> whatever, diameter in your sample to be, drum roll, I don't know, 10 feet, why not? And here's the unrealistic part. You somehow know, I don't have to put somehow each time, but I often do. The standard deviation of redwood diameter for all trees, to be clear, this is a population standard deviation, is, I don't know, three feet, because why not? Sure. Here's the information given to you. You are tasked with create a, I don't know, 80%, because why not? 80% confidence interval for mu. Often it's not specified, it just says mu here and you're supposed to know what that means. Suppose you're given this example right here. If you compare this with the previous example, you'll see that the same stuff was given to you. You randomly select 50 redwoods. It would be nice if you knew what symbol was equal to 50 in this example. You calculate the average diameter in your sample to be 10 feet. It would be nice if you knew what symbol was 10. You somehow know the standard deviation of redwood diameter for all trees is three feet. Be great if you could look through and label these three things. This first one is my sample size. It's the number of trees in my sample. We always use the lowercase n for that. This next one is the sample average. This isn't the average of all redwood trees. It's just of the 50 in my sample. X bar is the symbol you use for the sample average. And then finally, the standard deviation here. Strangely enough, this standard deviation applies to all trees. So this is a population parameter, even though it's unrealistic to know the population parameter, we're assuming we do, and we'll fix it yet later. So this is sigma, sigma equals three. What I would ask you to do is three things. The first thing I'd ask you to do is to state and justify the shape of the distribution, and then tell me the center and the spread. And hint, when I ask you about the shape in this class, the answer is always normal. Because right, that's the only one we've learned about. That's the only one we know how to do anything with. Your Z interval function only works if the shape is normal. And you're like, how do you know it's normal? You didn't say any in here anywhere that it was normal. Okay, I don't know the shape of the parent distribution for individual trees. But the central limit theorem tells me that as long as N is greater than or equal to 30, I get normality down here for free. So the shape is going to be normal. I promise you that. And you're going to write because... And then you'll write one of two things. You'll either write because the parent distribution is normal. If I said in the problem, suppose you know that the diameter is normally distributed, you'd write because parent distribution is normal. But if I didn't, like in this case, you'd say because n is greater than or equal to 30. You're citing the central limit theorem here. The center is always given by x bar in these confidence interval questions. This is what's called a point estimate. I don't really need you to know uh, that terminology for this part, um, as long as you can recognize it later on. And then finally, the spread, it's not sigma, it's sigma divided by the square root of n. And that's because we're talking about a sampling distribution, and that's because we're not talking about one redwood tree, we're talking about 50 of them. So what I would do is I would take 3 and divide it by the square root of 50. I don't know the square root of 50, so I don't know 3 divided by the square root of 50. If you feel like getting a decimal approximation for that, feel free. But don't do it for my benefit, I'm good with you leaving it just like this. This will be step one on your quiz this week. This will be step one on your midterm, I promise you. When you see this question on your quiz and your midterm, it will give you N, X bar, and sigma, I promise. 
and I will tell you, ask you for shape center spread. I will ask you to sketch the distribution. And because I'm nice like that, I'll even say, make sure that your picture includes, and then I'll say three things. The point estimate. You need to know that the point estimate is just your center. It's X bar, it's 10. Point estimate is just a way of talking about the center when we're dealing with confidence intervals like we are in this problem. And then it'll ask for your level of confidence, always stated in the problem. In this case, it's 80%. If you want to ballpark 80% in the middle, feel free. But they don't need to be drawn to scale. I don't really care. You can shade in this middle 80%. That's where the 80% lies. And then the bounds of your interval. The numbers that go right here and here. The answers to the question. And you get those straight out of your calculator. It's out of the Z interval function on your calculator, which lives in the stat menu underneath the tests column. It's the seventh thing listed here. So you can just jump down there by hitting seven or you can scroll down. Z interval is what you want. I'll explain more why it's Z interval in future chapters. But right now, there's nothing to compare it to. Z interval will always ask if you have data or statistics on the quiz and on the midterm, I'm gonna give you statistics. I believe on all the homework problems, they give you statistics, but if they ever don't, if they ever don't tell you X bar and N, and instead just list 50 observations, just put them into a list. No big deal. Type them into L1 and then tell your calculator you got data. And it's like, oh, okay, what list? You tell your calculator what list and it'll figure out X bar and N from that list. But we got statistics here and we'll have statistics on the quiz and we'll have statistics on the midterm. So we just fill in the statistics. Sigma is given to me to be three. X bar is given to me to be 10. And N is given to me to be 50. Again, it really wants sigma, not this spread here. Don't confuse that with inverse norm and normal CDF where it gives you this symbol, but really wants the spread, annoyingly. Here, they ask for sigma, they really want sigma. They'll divide it by the square root of n because you're telling them n. Confidence level is 80% now. So 0.8 or 0 0.80, whichever you prefer, and then calculate. Hit enter, it'll spit out two numbers. Those are the two numbers that go here and here. The answers to the question, if you want. Nine point, I don't know, I guess I'll write. Say I asked you to round to three decimal places. It's kind of weird that this one gets three and this one gets four decimal places. That's because I'm only using up one spot here with the nine, but I'm using up two here with the 10. It doesn't matter. 9.456, let's say. And then this one will be 10.544. Step one, shape center spread. Step two, draw this picture. Step three, tell me what that means. All right, it's not enough in this class to just get the numeric answers. You're supposed to understand what you just figured out. What'd you just figure out? Okay, remember in this problem, the idea is I don't know mu. Mu represents the population average. Mu represents the average if you went out and you measured every single redwood in the population. Every single one. There's way too many. You could never do that. So what you instead do is you get a sample average. Based on this sample average, I can make a guess at the population average. I'm 80% sure that the population average is between this and this. I am... 80% sure or certain or confident, whatever, that the, maybe I'll even write population to be really clear here. Population, try that again. Population, average diameter. Or if you want to write, I am 80% certain that the average diameter of all redwood trees, to make it clear to the reader you're talking about the population. I'm 80% certain that the population average diameter of redwoods is between, <laughs> whatever, 9.456. Did I give units? Are these feet? Uh, feet, sure. And 10.544 feet. When I'm done with this, maybe I'll Google it and see how far I was off in these uh, values, but it doesn't really matter. This is step three. Every single time I give you a confidence interval question, I'm going to ask you for at least steps one, two, and three. Turns out there's an optional fourth step that I could tack on at the end. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video because it takes a little while and it deserves its own video. But just FYI, on your quiz this week, actually I don't remember if I put it on your quiz this week. I'll figure out if I put it on your quiz this week and I'll include it in an email to you. There might be a part four. I think there is. Yeah, actually, I know there is. On your quiz this week, there's a part four. And on the next video, you'll learn how to do part four. Before I end this video, I just want to make a quick comment here. We only looked at 50 trees. 
right? This is the power of statistics. We only looked at 50 trees. That's not that many trees. And we're making a conclusion about, I don't know, millions of trees, however many redwoods there are. And it's a pretty good conclusion. Like I'm fairly certain, 80% sure, that's not too bad that the diameter is between these two numbers. That's not some huge span. I'm not being like, I'm 20% sure that the diameter is between three feet and 13 feet. You're like, yeah, that didn't help me any. I'm 80% pretty damn sure that the diameter is between what, nine and a half feet and 10 and a half feet, just based on the 50 trees that I looked at. It's pretty good. That's what you do with statistics.